Okay, good morning everyone. So my name is Duncan and today I'm actually looking at wood. Okay. So in the previous chapters, we've actually looked at aggregates, we've actually looked at binding materials, binding agents, lime, cement, you've looked at concrete, you've looked at mortar. So today we're actually coming to look at wood. So by the end of the chapter, we should have gone through this basic stuff. We should have gone through an introduction of wood, what wood is. We get wood from trees, so the basic structure of a tree classification of trees, processing of timber and industrial timber products. Okay, so this is our objectives for this lesson. One, we should recognize and classify diverse wood types used in construction. The second one is to comprehend the anatomical structure of a tree, understand the processes involved in the processing of timber, and understand the wood preservation methods, different methods that we preserve, preserve wood for long period. So what is wood? Okay, we know we get wood from trees, okay. Now, wood is actually an important material in construction and civil engineering and engineering as a whole. And it's actually based on some key points. The first one is wood is readily available. And the second one is it is readily available at a relatively low cost. Okay, wood is, wood is very cheap. It's not really expensive. That's for wood. It's also very easy to use. Okay, and when it is properly, properly designed, it's actually very durable. That's for wood. Wood has a high mass to strength to mass ratio, meaning that it can actually support significant load without adding excessive weight. And the most oldest and common one used in engineering construction materials is timber. Okay. And the physical characteristics of timber are mainly the strength, the durability, and the appearance, the beauty. Okay. So all of these are actually derived from the natural characteristics presented in growing the tree. So basically, that's it for wood. Okay, it has a high strength to mass ratio, and the strength to mass ratio is very, very important because it actually allows the structures to be very steady and also very efficient. So let's look at the basic structure of a tree. Because we get wood from trees, let's look at what a tree is. So we have three different, three main parts of a tree. So the first one is the trunk, the second one is the crown, the third one is the roots. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these things and do talk about what they are. So the root is mainly the foundation in the tree. Okay, so the root is the part that is actually that holds the tree securely in the soil, well, so that when it rains or when the winds blow, it holds the tree firmly in the soil, so the tree is stable and the tree can stand. Okay, now how high or how large a root is this? Will depend on how old the tree is okay the root main purpose are to absorb water and essential nutrients to help the tree grow and also absorb moisture and other mineral substance and supply them to the trunk okay and the trunk is the main supporting structure of the tree okay the trunk is connected to the trunk is what actually connects the roots and the crown so if you have the crown at the top and the roots at the bottom you have the trunk in between the section and it's actually what connects the two of them and it acts like let's see a pipe okay a pipe through which maybe the nutrients that are picked from the roots go to go to the other parts of the tree maybe the water that is picked up and other important stuff that is necessary for the growth of the tree okay now the trunk is the part that is eventually cut down to become the timber that's the wood that we know okay and finally we have the crown so the crown actually consists of the branch and the leaves okay and the crown is where photosynthesis happens which produces energy that actually sustains the tree's growth okay so understanding this this is mainly the structure of a tree now let's look at also the anatomy of a tree okay so if you look at the outer structure so let's look at kind of the inner structure do you get it so the first one is the outer layer okay so the outer layer or the outer back let's say for instance if you cut a tree on a cross if you cut a tree cross sectionally okay when you look at it from the top let's say like a plan view okay that's exactly what we, what we actually have here okay so the thing is you can see that the tree is actually in three main parts okay so you have the outer back or the outer layer which mainly protect the tree from external damage you have the inner bark the inner bark inner bark 
that's the phloem cells okay and you have the cambium layer so the cambium layer is a very thin layer of living cells which are actually responsible for the tree's growth in the gut okay and we have the inner part so the inner part is actually considered into two main parts we have the subwood and the heartwood okay so as i said the subwood are the xylem cells which brings water and minerals from the roots to around the trees and the heartwood is like the old subwood that is they have outgrown transporting water so they are very thick they are very hard they are very strong they serve as the pillar of the tree okay and the heartwood is more durable it's more resistant to decay so the heartwood is actually very valuable in construction okay so that's also for the anatomy of a tree now let's look at the classifications of trees so you have two classifications of trees based on their growth patterns the first one is the endogenous trees okay now these actually grow by forming layers where new wood fibers crossing into the crossing into previously formed layers okay so for instance essentially the wood from new wood like the tree grows inwards that's mainly the idea the tree grows inwards and the thing is for endogenous trees okay they are generally not preferred for engineering work because of their internal structure and it actually doesn't yield a consistent strong timber needed for construction okay depending on which kind of tree even for the same kinds of trees they are in the inner layers and inner structure is kind of different per tree that's for the endogenous trees for the exogenous trees it actually grows outward by adding rings to the young wood okay so the tree grows outward like let's go let's say if this was the tree the tree keeps growing from here outwards okay but for the endogenous tree they actually grow inwards okay so that's mainly for the endogenous trees okay and the exogenous trees are actually preferred okay preferred for their strength okay preferred for engineering purposes okay now what's interesting here is that there is a distinct the distinct annual rings not only help in aging okay but also it's provide a more predictable and uniform material okay so that's for the exogenous trees so when they grow outward by adding rings of young wood displaying the distinct concentric group known as the annual rings okay and the annual rings don't only help in aging but they also provide a more predictable and uniform pattern that's on the trees cross section okay now timber from exogenous trees are further classified into two main parts that's the softwood and hardwood mainly used for engineering works okay uh i've gone too fast okay so as we say now timber from exogenous trees can be classified into softwood and hardwood okay so we are what we have here is the part of a trunk of a tree okay and we have different parts okay we have different parts the first one is the outer back the outer back is the protective layer of the tree okay now when you fell this tree when you cut this tree down and you want to process it for timber you remove the outer back it is mainly removed okay now beneath the outer back is the sapwood that's the fluid the xylem sorry a xylem which is similarly lighter and it's more active in transporting water and other minerals we have the heartwood which is the solid retired part of the tree which is the denser portion the inner portion is actually more resistant to decay and insects okay so the soft wood is actually formed from the sap wood and the hard wood is actually formed from the hard wood okay so now let's look at different ways that we can actually process timber so in order to process timber as a construction material we need to process it very well appropriately and there are main there are some three main steps the first one is the felling the second one is the season and the third one is the timber conversion so let's actually look at the felling of trees okay so felling is the cutting down of trees in order to obtain timber okay that's mean so we cut down tree for the purpose of obtaining timber now felling is important in a way to get the timber because you can't get the timber whilst the tree is still standing. The moment we need the timber, the tree must die. And we must cut the tree down. Then we must process it. Now, it is important to know that while this step seems straightforward, it is actually carefully planned, okay, in adherence to some sustainable practices and 
environmental agreements okay so we have responsible felling that means you don't just go to the forest and cut as any tree as you want just for timber no so responsible felling ensures that forests are not over exploited and the ecosystems in the forest are maintained maybe you are cutting a tree and the tree is a habitat for some birds or something it becomes a problem so now during this process that's responsible felling what happens is professionals the people who cut trees they cut trees based on three things the age the health and the environmental impact if the tree is very old it's easy to cut if the tree has is sick and is dying the leaves are falling off easily it's also a way to cut and if the tree is in a position where it has a very it has a negative impact on the environment that one too can be cut away now once the tree has actually been felled the timber needs to be dried okay and the process of drying it is actually known as seasoning okay so this step is actually very important for fresh cut wood because fresh cut wood contains a high level of moisture mostly in the form of sap okay if it's not actually properly dried the tree actually undergo fermentation okay so sapping is done the seasoning is actually done to prevent timber from fermentation okay now apart from fermentation other things that can go that can a tree that can be prone to if it's not properly dried is either shrinking or even decay okay so seasoning reduces the moisture content in the tree thereby stabilizing the timber and improving the strength and durability now depending on the timber species and the use case at the end seasoning can be done naturally in open air okay or we have controlled kill dry method that means you kind of have an oven where you place the trees inside okay as i said it's dependent on the timber species and the end use case and the next step in processing of timber is timber conversion okay so after the timber or the wood is properly seasoned it is actually ready for conversion now this means that shaping the tree and sizing it into usable dimensions that's mainly conversion conversion is shaping and sizing it into usable now there are different methods of conversion okay the first one is ordinary soil this is the simplest method where the logs are actually cut into plants so you can have you see that when workers are working they have some straight straight woods plain to be they put it at the back of the pickup trucks kind of straight straight yeah those are the planks short kind of it's it's not they are very long but their width and the length is small and the length it's very very long okay so that's mainly the ordinary soil we have the quarter soil so the quarter soil actually involves cutting a log in such a way that the growth rings are often oriented in a particular way to enhance the durability and actually reduce warping okay that's the quarter soil it's cut in a way such that the growth rings are oriented in a particular way to enhance the ability of the timber and reduce warping now tangential method this method produces wider boards by more variation in grain according to the grain size okay so this is the method that you use to produce a very for instance plywood plywood is very wide flat wide ones the tangential method is actually used and the last one is the radial sawing okay now cuts are made from the center of the log wood outward okay that's mainly radial sawing, resulting in boards with the uniform grain pattern so that's also radial sawing now each method here has its advantages and disadvantages depending on the desired use case okay for instance the quarter sawing is actually used for high quality furniture in flooring because it mostly minimizes the defects and produces a more consistent grain pattern okay so that's for the processing of timber the next one is the timber preservation that's the processing of timber okay so after conversion, there's actually one important step, which I just said is the timber preservation, okay? So timber preservation involves treating the wood to enhance its durability. And the treatments are designed to make a timber more resistant to one, infect attacks and two, fungal decay, okay? That's mainly the two main things that the treatments are designed for. So it's designed to resist insect attacks, for instance, Maybe there's termite infestation that can actually weaken the structures of food. The termites will eat into the wood and make it very weak. So the treatment is such that to prevent this kind of insect, uh, insect attack. The next one is the fungal decay. So in most 
moist environment and my, let's say for instance the trees at a place where it rains a lot it will encourage fungal growth okay and the fungus on the tree fungi on the tree over time will actually start eating into the wood and making the wood weaker and weaker and weaker okay and the process for treating or preservation of timber mainly includes chemical treatments where preservatives are actually applied okay there are also physical methods like thermal modification that to improve the durability but then that one doesn't involve chemicals okay the standard for tree tree preservation is there are standards for preservation that's the treatment okay and one standard is what's actually here is 401-2001 okay so this is to ensure that a timber is actually meeting a rigorous quality criteria if they if we have a timber that doesn't meet this specific standard then that means the tree the timber is not good okay it can't be really used in the industry or for construction stuff because there will be problems with the tree okay so now let's talk about the natural wood that is further processed to meet diverse needs in the modern construction and design okay so first of all after we get there after we get the timber the timber is actually made into industrial made products known as composite boards okay so the common industrial timber products are the following one plywood okay so plywood is actually made by gluing thin layers or in quotes plies that's plywood by p-l-i-e-s plies of wood veneer okay so plywood is actually prioritized for one its stability its strength and its versatility okay it's commonly used in a lot of stuff for furniture to structure applications it depends okay the next one is the particle board or chip board okay so the particle board or chip board is made from wood chips or particles that are bonded together with a synthetic resin okay now this is often used for furniture and interior applications due to mainly its cost effectiveness the next one is the hardboard so the hardboard is actually a type of engineering wood that's actually denser and harder than the particle board okay you're making it use in applications where a smooth and also a durable surface is actually required okay the fiber board is actually made from wood fibers which comes in various densities and is used for most other structural and decorative purposes the blackboard is used is constructed with coarse strips of food the blackboard the block board sorry the block board is known for its strength and stability and it makes it ideal for door panels uh, doors and panels and window frames and other stuff and the last one is the decorative laminate okay so these are thin layers of decorative materials bonded together to a substrate and it's often used to provide a visually appealing finish while protecting the underlying material okay so each of these products presents a way of adding value to the natural wood by optimizing its properties for a specific use okay and the manufacturing of these products are designed to ensure the consistency the durability and also the cost effectiveness which is crucial when you are using it in the industry for both commercial and residential applications okay so to sum whatever we've done up we've actually gone through the introduction of wood we've explored what is wood we know that wood is mainly a construction material due to its availability cost effectiveness high strength to match ratio and the natural beauty okay we've looked at the basic components of a tree the root the trunk and the cow and we saw the internal anatomy of a tree which includes the cambium the sap wood the hard wood and the influences of the quality of timber we also classified the tree into two main types based on their growth method that's the exogenous tree which actually grows outside outwards then the endogenous which grows inwards we looked at timber processing the processing which is felling seasoning conversion and we also looked at timber preservation which is critical to enhance the durability and the longevity of timber finally we actually looked at timber industrial timber products which we see that how the wood is transformed into various composite products such as plywood particle board block board decorative laminates and etc depending on the construction needs okay so i hope this one this lesson has actually given you some insights on the chapter on wood thank you very much